So you've just bought the Asus Tough 3 RX 5700 XT 8GB EVO gaming card, but how'd you get it in there? Don't worry guys, in this video I'm going to show you from start to finish how to prepare your system, how to install the card, and how to get to gaming, so check it out. Before we actually install the card, we need to get the system ready. Now, if you're coming from NVIDIA or AMD or even Intel, I recommend that you uninstall your old drivers first. And I don't mean a simple uninstall from the Intel, NVIDIA or AMD software even. I recommend a wipe using Wagner Soft's DDU. Let me show you real quick how to do that. So on your computer, using your old video card or even using the Asus card right now, we're going to open up a web browser and go to wagnerdsoft.com. Then we're going to click on the latest version available. We're going to scroll down a little bit over here and then we click official download here. That's going to go ahead and download DDU. So while that's there, we're going to open up another tab and go to amd.com. Then we're going to click on drivers and support. On here, we go to graphics, AMD Radeon 5700 series, then AMD Radeon RX 5700 series, and AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, and we click Submit. Okay, we're going to find whatever version of Windows we use. In my case, it's going to be Windows 10 64-bit, and then we're going to use the latest and the greatest. Now, mind you, these are optional drivers. Some people prefer using Wickle drivers, Windows Hardware Quality Lab Assured. I'm going to go ahead and use this version, so I'm just gonna click Download. Okay, and that starts the download here. Now, while that's downloading, I'm gonna click Open File, and then we're gonna go ahead and click Extract. And I'm going to go ahead and extract it to the root of my C drive in a directory DDU. We'll click extract here. Everything's already downloaded here. So I'll go ahead and close this browser. So in order to get into safe mode, we're going to hold down the left shift key, right click on the start button, hover over shutdown or sign out and click restart. Okay, so that's going to take us into this menu where we're gonna go ahead and select Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings, then Restart to change Windows options such as, and then we click Restart. All right, so on Startup Settings, we're gonna go ahead and select number four for Enable Safe Mode. All right, so after logging in, now we're in safe mode. So we're going to go ahead and go into File Explorer and on the root of the C drive, we'll find the DDU folder. Open that up and then double click on Display Driver Uninstaller. All right, this seems to be the first time you click OK. All right, now this is very important. So being that I had an NVIDIA card before, I'm gonna go ahead or place a check in everything under NVIDIA. Now, if you had AMD before, it's okay, and I mean an AMD video card, it's okay to leave everything here under NVIDIA selected, but be very careful here. So make sure to only have remove the C AMD drivers folder and remove AMD Crimson Shader cache folder. Leave these two here in case you have an AMD processor, that way you don't remove chipset drivers, okay? And then the other very important thing right over here is make sure you place a check in prevent downloads of drivers from Windows Update when Windows search for a driver for a device. Kind of confusing there. Place a check there, click OK, click Close. Then here you select your GPU, you select your video card. For me, again, it was NVIDIA. You can select clean and restart, highly recommended. Clean and do not restart, clean and shutdown. So what we're going to do in this case is do a clean and shutdown because we're going to want to remove all the drivers, shut down the system so that we're ready to install the new Asus AMD card. And then we'll get back into Windows in a fresh state of Windows. So we'll click clean and shutdown. You're going to notice that portion of the screen scrolling up, just letting you know everything it's doing, and then it's going to shut down. All right, so it's done there. Let's get to the hardware. All right, now that we've unplugged the system, we have the side panel open. The first thing we're going to want to do so that we don't zap any of the components in the machine is make sure we're grounded. So. I recommend touching any of the metal aluminum steel in your system. That way you discharge all the ESD in your body and you don't discharge it on your components. 
because you could end up killing them. If you have an ESD band, that helps as well. But again, touch the case, discharge yourself, and don't walk around because that's going to build up more ESD. And when you come back, you're going to have to touch your system again. Okay, so now the second thing we're going to need to do is remove the PCIe cable from our previous video card if you had one. Let me show you real quick how to do that. All right, so I zoomed you up pretty close so that you can see exactly what I do. So right down here, you notice there's a little clip. We're going to push on that clip. And then while it's pushed in, we're gonna pull the clip out. This was the little clip that I was talking about. That holds on to a little clip down here. In video cards, the clip will be on the bottom. AMD cards, they'll be up on the top, just in case so you're not confused. Okay, now with that removed, we're going to go ahead and unscrew the video card. Depending on the system, some are gonna have the screws along the inside of the case. On this particular case, it's going to be on the outside. So I'm just gonna go ahead, open this up. I'm not focusing too much on this because again, it is different. And I'm just going to take this out just to get out of the way for now. And then just unscrew this. Okay, now this particular card only takes up two PCIe slots in the back. So just removing those two, we're safe here. Okay, and now one other part you want to be very careful on because you could damage your motherboard doing this. Just above the video card, you can see right over here, there's a little locking mechanism. It's going to be different on most motherboards. Some will be right underneath the card, so it's a little bit hard to get to, but they're mostly going to be right up here on top. Okay, so again, it's that little guy right there. So all we're going to do is push it and then we're gonna see the card stick out a little tiny bit. Okay, may not be too noticeable, but now when I push the card in, you'll notice that little clip pops out a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna push that in again. Okay, now you saw the card come out a little bit more. And at this point, we can easily remove the video card and we're done with that. This was that lip I was telling you about. So just make sure now that we install the new card, it's open and unlocked so that it can grip on to the new video card. Okay, so with that, you would have noticed the card came out of these two slots right over here. It also came out of this PCIe slot. Now, back here, in between the motherboard and the case, there are two little slots. That's where these two are going to fit. Okay, so now we'll just grab the new video card. Just remember, this is a very long card and it thankfully does fit in my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the measurements on the screen so that you guys know. I also mentioned this in the unboxing and I'll go ahead and list that above. So now we just slide the card in and in that same PCIe slot that we removed the previous card, we'll just go ahead, slide it in and you'll notice that little locking mechanism locks again. And that's it, that simple. Now mind you, that's just sliding in the card. So now that we have the card installed, we're going to go ahead and just screw the card in so that nothing happens as we're installing it. Now we have to go ahead and connect the PCIe cables right over here. And yes, you need both connected. Okay, so coming in a little bit closer so that you could see the top of the card where those two little clips hang on to, we're going to go ahead and first install the six pin. Now, if you have a six plus two, you can easily detach one of them and then just go ahead, match up those pins and you heard a little teeny tiny click. And then in this case, this is an eight pin. So again, if you have a six plus two, just join them and then go ahead and push it in and it will lock into place. All right, so now with that done, we're ready to start installing the new drivers. Now, once we're in Windows, we're gonna go ahead and install the AMD drivers. 
So we go into File Explorer, Downloads, and we'll see the latest Radeon drivers that we just installed. Now I am going through an Avermedia 2K Plus external capture card, so it's going to be a little bit different. Just click run on that if you get that message. You can choose to install the drivers in the default location, I do. So just click install. Here we can just click additional options just to make sure. And even though we did clear out the previous drivers, I like to go ahead and take that extra precaution and do a factory reset during the installation. That does not wipe out any kind of BIOS settings you might have on the video card or your system. That's just factory reset for the drivers. And then we'll go ahead and click install here. Okay. And we can either wait the two minutes or just click restart now. All right, so once we get back into Windows, the drivers are gonna go ahead and start themselves up again to start installing. So you can leave allow AMD to collect anonymous uses information. I'll go ahead, uncheck that for myself. And then to make sure that everything's done, we'll just go ahead and click restart. All right, so we have everything installed now. You can just come back here in the background, right click, AMD Radeon software, and you have the advantage of using all this awesome AMD Radeon software. You're gonna get a bunch of pop-ups like this. It is a bit annoying. You'll get over it. <laughs> they also have over here the quick setup. This will guide you through installing and configuring your drivers if you do gaming, esports, power saving, standard, and all that stuff. I'm gonna skip that for now, but you can see we have here all the games you might play, your last game, your drivers and software version, upgrade advisor, but right now this is the top of the line. Here you can capture media, tutorials, coming over here. This is where all your games, all your settings. If you want to tweak some of those settings, media, compatibility, streaming, this is what you use in order to stream your games. If you want to, you don't have to use this. You could use something like OBS as well. And then performance, this is where you can come in and actually tweak and tune, overclock your video card if you wanted to. This will all stay in the drivers, not in the actual firmware of the card though. If you ran into any issues with the drivers, some of you might, I'll go ahead and link up above the, the video I created on helping you resolve those issues. It goes over a lot of what I went over here and a little bit extra to help you guys out. But if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I'd always be more than happy to help you guys out. There will be a lot more on this coming soon, game testing and the overall review, so stay tuned. Iggy out. See you guys.